Morning folks, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. Just out here today, underneath my overhang in my shop area, and there's always something to do every day around a homestead or around a home that you live in. Out in the country, there's always things that have to be maintained and things that need to be taken care of. I'm going through some tools that I purchased recently in a lot. There are lots and lots of auger bits and drill bits within this setup, and those are very important tools to longer term self-reliance when electricity may not be an option. Augers with bits and braces of different sizes as well as T-handled larger augers for timber framing and things like that are always going to be a plus. I also came up with a couple of easy stitch awls here and this nice about a 17 inch belt axe and this axe is really really nice in that the handles handmade and the head is actually hand forged. We'll take a look at this thing in a minute. It's actually razor sharp. I've already sharpened it and oiled it up, but I need to make a sheath for this today or a mask. And I found some old pieces of scrap leather here that I use for napping pads and things like that. I think I'm going to use that in conjunction with one of these easy stitch awls to make an axe mask today. Stay with me guys. So taking a look at this axe, which is my favorite part of this whole find, as much as I love old self-reliance type tools, I'm an axe fanatic. Um, this is a hand forged axe. It's got a handmade handle. The handle is thinner in profile here and thicker in the back where the grip would be. I really like that. It's got a slight curve to it. It's not exactly a straight handle. Very traditional axe handle type design for something that would have been made on the fly in the woods. The axe head itself doesn't have any maker markings on it because it's a hand forged head. And if you look at the eye on the front you can see where it's sandwiched together to be forged welded. That's how I know that this is a hand forged axe and not a cast axe or something like that. So who knows who made this axe or when but it's a very very razor sharp axe like I said and it didn't take much of a hit with this carborundum stone to get it nice and sharp. Something else that came in the same lot of tools. It's a very lightweight carborundum stone. I like this propeller type stone really, really well. It says number 198 carborundum brand right on it. And it's a really, really nice stone. It came in the same lot. I'll keep it with the axe. So let's see what we can do to put a mask on this axe. All right, so the first step in making this drop-in sheath is just to give ourselves a little room and trace this axe out just like this. Give ourselves a little room on this side to understand that we've got to fold it over and we'll leave the top as is for right now. Then we just need to trim this away with a set of heavy shears just like this. I'll trim on the outside of the lines and make sure I'm giving myself plenty of room. We should be able to use this portion here as our welt that we're cutting off right here. That should follow that pattern around good enough to give us a welt, which is a good thing. And we're just going to cut up into here like this. Then it's as simple as taking this piece and tracing it onto this other piece. Let's kind of make this a little bit more of a gentle curve there. Like that. Okay, so let's talk about this awl for a minute. The concept behind this awl is that there is a loadable spool right here. And the tool comes with several things inside the handle. It comes with a couple different needles. And it comes with this screwdriver type tool. And the screwdriver is to remove this spool. And there's a couple different brands of these on the market. Some of them have a spool that's external. Some of them have the spool that's internal like this one. So we're going to take that screw 
out of the spool. Now you could reload this spool very easily with a small diameter bank line, like a number eight bank line would work fine for this. And then you could reload this spool instead of buying another spool of twine. You could just reload this with that bank line. This one's been tied off on the inside to keep it from coming unraveled. But it's just a waxed nylon thread. So it's really no different than a small diameter bank line. And the precedence of this is, is that you have a chucking device here that you actually feed the line into from the top like this and you push it out of the chucking device like this. Once you have done that then you reload your spool back onto the housing and you put the screw back in it. The difference between this one and the other model is that the spool itself is contained inside the handle whereas this one's on the outside. I would say that either one of them will work just fine. And then you'll just put that screw back in and tighten it down. And that holds your spool in place while you're working. Now you'll take one needle and you'll put it back inside the case or the handle. And you'll take the other needle and you'll put it in the chuck like this. Now if you look at this needle it has a channel cut into one side of it here and that's for your line to ride in. So when you chuck this up and you put this needle in the chuck you're going to want to ensure that that line is lined up with the channel and that will make the needle easy to load in there. Then you screw it down. Now there is a device that comes with this in the tools here. On the other side of the screwdriver there's actually a wrench that's made for tightening this chuck down just like that. If you've got that lined up properly you'll be able to pull line through with the needle in there and it will unwind all by itself and you can wind it back up just as easy. Okay, So that's how you load the needle and the thread into this device. So let's put this stuff back inside the handle like this. Then what you're going to do is you're going to basically thread the eye of the needle just like you would any other needle just like that. Once you have your needle threaded it should be coming up through the chuck in the same line as that indentation on the needle going through the eye at the same place to create a loop and you'll want to pull half the amount of thread out of here that you need for your project. So if you're going to do something this length you're going to want something at least that length pulled out of this all before you start. Okay so to use our lock stitch all we've got our tag end hanging out here the length of our run. We're going to go through our holes with the awl, our pre-punched holes that we created just like this and we're going to pull the tag end of this line all the way through our piece just like this. And we want this hanging on this side. Then we're going to come back through and we're going to push it through the next hole or the next set of holes just like this. And when we come through this time and we pull it back we're going to create a small loop right here. When we do that we're going to take our string and put it through that loop just like this so that when we pull this back up it's going to create a locking stitch and we can hold on to this to pull that tight and this.
Sometimes I'll take a couple pieces of one by four and put them in here holding the leather at the stitch line right here in my vise and that gives me kind of a saddle stitching vise or a stitching vise that's made on the fly and that works really well to hold your stuff and if you hold it pretty tight to the stitch line where you're going it's going to be much easier for you to manipulate it around when you're trying to sew it down. Okay guys, well I appreciate joining me for this quick little project. You know, this is nothing beautiful. It doesn't have to be. It just has to be functional. I'm just looking for something to protect myself from the sharp bit of this axe when I'm carrying it in my bedroll or my backpack. And I wanted to test out this Easy All that came with these tools today. And what's interesting to me is to learn using different tools and understand what those tools can do for me in a longer term self-reliance type scenario. It's the same reason I learned to blacksmith, the same reason I learned to trap, and the same reason I learned to tan and prep hides. It's because in the longer term those things could become necessities. And tools that can be used with no electricity would definitely become a necessity in a long-term scenario whether it was on your homestead or whether it was in the woods. And understanding what tools you're going to take with you when the time comes if you have to leave your homestead or understanding what the most important tools are to your longevity is a very important thing for us to explore together and we're going to look at some of these other tools as we go but suffice it to say that in generalities you're going to need to understand woodworking blacksmithing trapping hunting fishing all of those things are going to allow you to make construct and repair leather working sewing all of those things will allow you to make and repair the things that you would need in a longer term scenario. Well guys, thanks for joining me out here today. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can.